In this LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga video, we are going to be breaking down all of the details in the newly released DLC trailer, so I can share with you all of the details as we break it down. Before we do get into this video though, make sure you do subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any news updates about this game and the DLC because I've got a whole host of Skywalker Saga content coming. Let's kick off this DLC trailer breakdown by taking a look at the most requested character pack, which is the Clone Wars pack. We already knew Captain Rex would be the headline character in this pack. We had some gameplay clips of him, plus he's on the artwork for this DLC pack. But there are a few things we can take away from the new DLC trailer. He shoots red bolts instead of blue. This could just be an oversight, a mistake by one of the developers. But it could be fixed next week when the DLC does release. But who knows if this is going to happen, they still haven't put Django Fett's real sound effect for his pistols in, so maybe this is left like it is. Next up is Asajj Ventress, and we get to see her wield her two lightsabers. It's the same character design as one of her LEGO minifigs, but this specific character design is based on her 2003 Clone Wars non-canon appearance, not from the series that started in 2008, which is canon. TT Games used this design in the Force Awakens Clone Wars character pack, so they're just reusing assets at this point. This was part of a LEGO set that was inspired by the 2003 sets, and yet this Clone Wars pack it uses the logo for the 2008 series, and they're using the wrong Asajj Ventress. I don't really care, but it's just something I know people will definitely be disappointed about because it isn't the correct version. Moving on to another dark side user, and it's Savage Opress. What's great about this character is that they didn't actually reuse the Force Awakens DLC assets or the minifig that LEGO produced. It actually has leg and feet printing with some extra detail on the torso print as well. So they did actually go to extra lengths here to make Savage Opress a much better character because he did just have plain black legs in the previous game, but now he has full leg printing with even feet printing, which looks great. The only other Clone Wars character shown in this DLC trailer was Gar Saxon wearing his Mordalorian appearance, which looks really awesome. I love the visor, how it's an emissive texture. It really stands out in dark places. So great work by the CT Games artist there. He's probably going to be part of the villain class, I'd imagine, and we are able to see him in this gameplay trailer using the semi-auto submachine gun Lego piece. The same weapon that is being used by Rex for his dual pistols. I think it works best for Rex with his pistols because they actually kind of resemble his pistols. But with Gar Saxon, it's going to be interesting to see how it works for him. Even though it's probably not going to be used as a pistol by him. The fifth and final character included in the Clone Wars DLC pack was confirmed by Warner Brothers to be Darth Maul. Because he was not shown in this trailer, we don't know what he will look like in this DLC pack, but I'm going to guess and say it's probably his Siege of Mandalore appearance. It would be really cool to have him wield both the Darksaber and the single red blade lightsaber. That would be really awesome to see. But regardless, I know some people will be very happy seeing a new skin for Darth Maul, specifically this one. Next up is the Book of Boba Fett pack, and this contains a character that so many people have been really wanting in the game, and that's Cad Bane. We finally get a look at Cad Bane, and it's a completely different look to the version that we have in the Force Awakens game and his Lego minifigs, which is great. They actually did fantastic work here. So as you can see, it's a mix match of his brand new Bad Batch Lego real minifig hat and tubes with a lighter skin tone and the Book of Boba Fett clothes. It is different to the torso piece that we have in the real Bad Batch minifig they just released, but it's great to see that they're taking real Lego minifigs pieces that are new, but also creating custom stuff as well. He dual wields his blaster pistols and will probably be part of the Bounty Hunter class. A completely original character that LEGO have not made yet is Cobb Vanth, and it's great to see him. Of course, because this is set during the Book of Boba Fett this pack, he's not wearing his armour, so he's just got his appearance from that season, and he has a single blaster pistol, and probably will be part of the hero class. Black Chrysanthemum does look cool, he's got some really intricate detail going on with his minifigure, another character that LEGO are yet to make in a real LEGO minifig, so it's great to see another custom character with plenty of detail. He does use a more longer range blaster in line with what we see in the book of Boba Fett, and as you'd expect, he's going to be part of the Bounty Hunter class. 
I would say the armorer is a bit of a surprise addition personally, but it is good to see her as well, given that she is a real Lego minifig. They've transferred that into the game pretty well. We do get to see her use her hammer as a weapon. So maybe she doesn't have a blaster because we don't actually see her with a blaster, I don't think, if I remember correctly, from the Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett. So maybe she just uses melee attacks with the hammer, which would be pretty cool to see. I don't think she'll be part of the hero class. Maybe she's going to be in the extra class. I think that makes more sense. Next up is a similar character to the armor because it's Peli who uses a spanner as her weapon in this trailer. So, and this uses her real Lego minifig appearance from the N1 Starfighter that we recently got and she will probably be part of the scavenger class I'd imagine. Moving on to the Obi-Wan Kenobi pack we knew that Ben Kenobi was confirmed but we didn't know what appearance we would get for him in this pack and as you can see we have the blue poncho variant from the earlier episodes in that series. He does use his lightsaber which means he's going to be part of the Jedi class. I wasn't sure if they would not give him a lightsaber perhaps and keep him to the hero class because he doesn't really use the lightsaber in those first few episodes but this shows us that we're getting that new version of Obi-Wan Kenobi with a lightsaber. Another character that we already saw gameplay of before and the front of the cover art of this pack was Reva and there isn't much new to talk about with her. She has her dual bladed lightsaber that spins around and she will be part of the dark side class. There is a mistake with Reva's character model though in the game because in the show and the real Lego minifig she wears gloves. Now moving on to the other inquisitors included in this pack we have the grand inquisitor and Again, he has that dual bladed lightsaber, but we only see clips of him using one blade. So perhaps you can control if you have more than one blade, or it's just certain attacks where it goes into two, perhaps. Maybe that's the case. I think that's a little bit more likely than being able to control which blade you have out. That's a striking difference between Reva and the next character, the fifth brother, who has the double bladed lightsaber ignited at all times. And on top of that, he does get his specific Kenobi style minifig that Lego recently released. It's not the Star Wars Rebels version. Same goes for the Grand Inquisitor. They are the new versions and not the old versions. Moving on to the Andor pack, and we already knew that Cassian would be wearing this new appearance, but something I noticed from the previous gameplay clips was that in one of the shots he has the double barreled blaster with the binoculars on the end, but in the artwork and the other clips of him, there are no binoculars attached to the end. I don't think you're going to be able to change the weapon attachments, but maybe they decided against having the binoculars at the end, or they've added the binoculars on the end later on in development and they just didn't change it for the artwork. I just don't know. And the next character is Cyril Khan in his Primor Enforcer uniform. He has a single pistol and will likely be part of the villain class. Lufen has his real Lego minifig appearance from the Ferric set that was recently released. So he's got the short hair and green clothes as well as the semi-auto submachine pistol and he's probably part of the hero class but we just don't know yet. Dedra is wearing her officer outfit so no cape or hat, it's just her standard officer outfit in the ISB. And then we also can see that she has a single pistol. And I can't imagine she will be outside of the villain class. Bix is part of this character pack as well. We get to see two shots of her in this trailer. Lego have not made a real Lego minifig for her yet. So this is TT Games' Lego interpretation of her. And she's going to be part of the scavenger class, as you'd expect but we can tell by the glider that she uses. On to the Star Wars Rebels pack, and we have Hera, and as you can see, she has the single blaster pistol, and she has the exact same appearance as her Lego minifig and the Force Awakens game. No change there whatsoever, they're just reusing assets for this one. Whereas Sabine has her season three look. This is a completely brand new minifig that's never been made by Lego. It's not from the Force Awakens DLC pack, it's completely original by TC Games. She's probably part of the hero class and she does wield those semi-auto submachine gun blaster pieces much like Rex. Kanan also has received a brand new appearance from the season three of Star Wars Rebels. As you can see, you've got the blindfolded variant of Kanan, which was not present in the Force Awakens game and Lego has not even made it into a real Lego minifig and we can see him using his blue lightsaber. So he's part of the Jedi class. Then we have Ezra, who is wearing his Season 3 outfit, which LEGO has not made into a real LEGO minifig. T 
TC Games have created this originally and it looks good and there is also his green lightsaber in action so he's part of the Jedi class. You can also see Ezra's lightsaber hilt is black as opposed to the regular silver colour. The last character we see in this trailer from this DLC pack is Grand Admiral Thrawn, a character that so many people have requested and he's going to be part of the villain class of course. He uses a standard blaster pistol and he has his appearance from the real Lego minifig. There is no change there. The sixth and final DLC pack is the Summer Vacation pack and we have Palpatine wearing his beach wear, which could just be a costume for Palpatine or rather a brand new character, I don't know. Then for Finn, in the artwork for this character's pack we see him with his episode 7 and 8 hair style, but with his flower shirt on, but in the gameplay he has his episode 9 hair, which we see in the Summer Vacation special, so I'd imagine he will have the episode 9 hair in game, it's just a mistake done by the artist for the artwork of this DLC pack, which is just a bit weird, but hey. I guess like Palpatine, it's probably just going to be a brand new skin for the character of Finn, rather than a brand new character, so it's not a separate character, it's just a different costume you can equip for Finn. R2-D2 is rocking his Christmas sweater appearance as seen in the LEGO Advent Calendar, but not seen in the Summer Vacation Special. This is something I did speculate about and it is kind of weird that they did include a Christmas thing for a Summer Vacation pack that wasn't part of the film, but is in the LEGO Advent Calendar, so I guess it makes sense from LEGO's point of view. Obi-Wan is another character wearing a flower shirt and he has his Obi-Wan Kenobi series hairpiece and I'd imagine, once again, he's another costume for Obi-Wan rather than just a brand new character. And then we have the Battle Damage Vader with the beach torso piece, but it's really strange because in the Summer Vacation he isn't battle damaged, neither is he in the LEGO Advent Calendar, so why TC Games did this I don't know. He doesn't also have flippers which was part of the real LEGO minifig with the Advent Calendar. Let me know down in the comment section below your thoughts on anything I've talked about in this video. And if you did enjoy this video, please do drop a like. Subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming DLC videos from me on the Skywalker Saga. And if you missed any of the previous episodes on screen, make sure you do click on the playlist on screen right now. And I shall see you in my next Skywalker Saga video. Goodbye.